When most students talk about what they want to learn in residency, they really focus in on knowledge. Knowledge is great. There is always more drug knowledge to be learned. There are literally thousands of medications out there that have different drug interactions, different side effects, different pharmacokinetic profiles. So saying that you want to get more knowledge as a resident, well, not only is that a given, but it's not a bad thing at all. However, I would say the most important things that I learned in residency weren't drug knowledge at all. So today I'm going to share the things that I learned as a pharmacy resident that isn't drug knowledge. The first thing I learned was how to verify orders. Now, of course, you talk about this in pharmacy school, but it is very different when you are the one who is clicking the button verify and is your license on the line. Also, as a student, you really don't have the opportunity to create much of your own process and figure out how to go about verifying orders. So as a pharmacy resident, one of the things that I learned from looking at different preceptors and figuring out how they verified orders was creating my own process of how I wanted to review the chart, what information I wanted to look at before I verified any orders, and just how I went about that efficiently. I also learned how to document my recommendations and interventions. Luna decided to join me for this part, but I feel like none of my preceptors or professors really explained the importance of doing these interventions or how they went about them, what information to include. And so this was something that I really learned as a resident. This is an important part of your job as you are documenting the things that you are making recommendations on, things that you want to happen even if they don't happen. And just a little tip here, document everything. No matter if the recommendation is approved or not, no matter how big or small that intervention may feel like it is to the patient, document it. I also learned how to make those recommendations. I feel like the easy part sometimes is to identify what interventions need to be made, but it's a whole different thing convincing somebody else that maybe doesn't know you incredibly well to agree with the decision that you would like to be made for the patient. As a student, you start learning how to make recommendations, but you always usually have that safety net of a preceptor and your preceptor will step in. And as a resident, you still have your preceptor available and they would probably step in if they were really concerned about patient safety. But you have so much more autonomy as a resident, you really get to learn what things work and what things don't. You get to take a little bit more ownership over those recommendations that you're making and sometimes you're having to make them on the fly without a preceptor standing there to guide you through that process. This is probably one of the most important things that you learn in residency is how to be a confident practitioner. It's very different to be a confident human than it is to be a confident pharmacist. As somebody who is a pretty confident person most of the time, it was a little bit difficult for me to transition from student to pharmacist who was really making those recommendations and having to own them. When I was alone on night shift, which was immediately after my residency, I didn't have the ability to be wishy-washy. I had to make recommendations strongly and confidently to the attendings that I was speaking with. And if I did not know, the way I approached saying that I needed to look it up or needed more information was much more confident than, uh, I'm not really sure, I think maybe it's this. No, I was able to say, you know, that's an excellent question. I think I know the answer, but I'm going to take some time to look that information up and I will get back to you. And I was also confident in my ability to look that information up and get back to them in a timely manner so they can take care of their patient. Really what allowed me to do that so calmly and easily was the fact that I gained a ton of confidence and experience as a resident. And whenever I was by myself at night, I knew my stuff. I knew the information that I needed and I believed in myself enough that I could make those confident recommendations even in very stressful situations like a code blue. Speaking of codes, that's another thing I learned how to be the pharmacist running the medications during a code blue. In order to have a successful code blue, the biggest thing that I learned was communication. How do I communicate with the attending? How do I communicate with the nurses whenever there's a medication concern that I need to be a part of? So some of the things that I communicated were repeating back doses that the physician gave me as I'm drawing up the dose and also communicating with the nurse what I was handing her after we drew up whatever medication it was. I also kept track of how often we were giving medications and so I would communicate, it has been X number of times since we gave the last dose, would you like me to give another dose of epinephrine or calcium or whatever it may be? I attended a lot of codes in residency, which sucked at the time because I don't like codes and nobody wants to see a child die, which is 
what I saw a lot because I was at a pediatric institution. However, all of those experiences gave me the confidence that I needed and gave me the skills that I needed to be very effective as the only pharmacist at night that was sometimes covering codes in the emergency room or the PICU or the NICU. Those are very critical situations that I needed to be ready and know my stuff for. Not only was I able to handle those alone, but I actually had students with me during several of the codes that I attended when I was staffing on nights, and I was able to be effective as a pharmacist, but also as an educator during those codes because of those experiences I had in residency. Speaking of precepting, I learned that being a preceptor is really hard. For those that are watching, you probably aren't to the precepting part of your career yet. It's a little rough, I'm not gonna lie. You think it's hard being a student? It is, I'm not gonna pretend like it's not, but it's also hard to be the preceptor, especially if you have situations where you're gonna have to have difficult conversations with a student. With precepting, you're having to maintain all of your regular responsibilities, plus educating a student as you go, reviewing all of the work that they did, making sure that you give them good evaluations that they can use moving forward so they can improve. And I will say that not all preceptors take it as seriously as I do, but as somebody who really wants to see my students succeed and get the most out of the time they have with me, I put a lot of effort into my rotations and making sure that I have a schedule that is set for them ahead of time so they can be able to plan for success, being able to give them good topic discussions to learn from, and just ensuring they have the best experience possible. All of that takes time and effort. You really don't get a lot of downtime when you have a student, and that can be exhausting, especially when I was working nights and having them for seven days in a row. But precepting is also incredibly rewarding, so it's one of the things that I feel very grateful for having in my residency program was the opportunity to precept a student and get a teaching certificate program and just improve those skills. Another part of teaching that I learned so much about in residency was giving presentations. I gave so many different types of presentations that I learned a lot of different communication and presenting styles. So we had CE presentations and presentations that were given for students like regular classroom lectures and then also facilitating lab classes, doing topic discussions with students, giving a journal club, having audiences that are other pharmacists to different physicians that are like attending physicians and also to students. In all of those situations, I had to change my presentation style, had different handouts and slide sets, and sometimes just talking through things at different levels to make sure that I was matching my audience. Seeing my first presentation in residency to the presentations that I create now because of the work that I did in residency is a huge difference. Whenever you do a presentation, especially one of those larger ones like a CE presentation or a student lecture, it can be a lot to manage, especially with all the other projects that you have going on as a resident. So another thing I learned was project management. So I learned how to manage a larger project like your major project in residency which spans over the entire year. I also learned how to manage smaller projects and projects where other people are involved and one of the ways I did this was through a project management tool. Things like Trello and Asana have been huge in helping me manage everything and the skills that I learned to manage projects helps me in my day-to-day -day job as I manage over 80 clinical trial studies from a medication standpoint. These next few things that I'm sharing that I learned in residency were probably a little bit more unexpected, but definitely important. The first one was that I realized I need to prioritize my health over my work. As a student, as a resident, there are so many competing obligations that sometimes it's very easy to forget that you need to take care of your basic needs as a human. I saw far too many pharmacists that just put work over everything else and I didn't want to do that. One of the next things I learned was setting boundaries and sticking to them. I saw so many people, not just in residency, but in pharmacy school that did not set boundaries, who prioritized work over everything else. And if you were to ask them if they were happy, they would say no, because they made enough comments that I could realize that they were not happy with their life. What is the point of doing all of this work if you're just gonna be unhappy? Occasionally I have to stay late, but most of the time I leave work at the time I'm designated to leave and I have a workout class scheduled to help hold me accountable and make sure I get out of there because that makes sure I show up for my workout class and get that exercise in. I just made sure I've built the boundaries that I need to to create habits that will set me up for a healthier lifestyle and a happier lifestyle because ultimately that's what's most important. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time. Bye. Now that I'm looking back
back I can see all the signs I tried to fill in 